In this video, we're going to be looking at hemoglobin. We're going to look at the structure and function, the adaptive advantage that hemoglobin gives mammals, as well as some alternatives that are found elsewhere in the animal kingdom. Hemoglobin is found on the red blood cells, or the technical word for red blood cells is erythrocytes. Now, each of these hemoglobin molecules that are found in these erythrocytes contain four heme molecules, which contain iron. And this is a heme molecule over here. And you can see that at the center of it is an iron. Okay, so a metal iron uh, is at the center. And this is the area that bonds with the oxygen or to some extent carbon dioxide to move it around the body. Around these four hemes, we have four globin proteins. So this is the heme here, the green one. One, two, three, four. So our four hemes. And then we have our four globins around that. Uh, now these are proteins, and we have two alpha and two beta on either side. And that just refers to the direction of the twist of the protein. The adaptive advantage that hemoglobin gives to animals is it vastly increases the amount of oxygen that can be carried in the blood. In humans, about 98% of the oxygen is carried attached to the hemoglobin in a compound called oxyhemoglobin, uh, and the other 2% is found dissolved in the blood plasma. If the animal and or human was relying on just the blood plasma to carry that oxygen, it wouldn't be able to get as much oxygen around the body and therefore wouldn't be able to support the respiration that's occurring in those energy hungry cells. So by having this hemoglobin, it actually increases the carrying capacity of the blood by around 70 times, uh, giving those animals with hemoglobin, uh, generally vertebrates, an adaptive advantage over other animals. Other animals don't actually have hemoglobin, but most of them have ways in which, or compounds, in which they can carry oxygen through the blood. So generally they don't rely on just the blood plasma. Uh, so for example, in uh, invertebrates, we might see other oxygen carrying proteins, including uh, hemolymph uh, in insects or hemocyanin in some squids. Uh, now, an interesting example is the mackerel ice fish. Now, the mackerel ice fish doesn't have any hemoglobin or any uh, oxygen carrying protein at all. So its blood is actually a very clear, uh, just like water, basically. Uh, and the way that it gets away with this is because it lives in the icy waters around Antarctica, the oxygen levels in the water are very, very high. As a liquid gets warmer, its ability to hold dissolved oxygen decreases. So therefore, this wouldn't work for anything living on land, or in particular an endotherm that's looking at about 37 degrees. Uh, but for an ice fish living in sub-zero uh, temperatures, the amount of oxygen that's found in, dissolved in that water, and, and that can be dissolved in the blood, is very, very high. In this video, we've looked at the structure and function of hemoglobin being made of four iron-containing heme molecules uh, surrounded by four globin molecules, two alpha and two beta. We've looked at the adaptive advantage being that a much, much larger amount of oxygen can be carried around the body by having hemoglobin, giving those animals that have it an advantage over other animals. Uh, and being able to provide more oxygen to their cells. And we've looked at some of the alternatives that are found in animals that don't have haemoglobin, such as haemolymph.